Praise the Lord, Church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In case you don't know me, I am Brother Hosanna Divi. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, Hosanna E. e. David, and also visit our website where my message is downloadable. HosannaTV.com I'm prompted in my heart to preach this message today. I didn't actually plan it that I'm going to do this video. But the Lord places a burden in my heart and I don't want to let it go. Today I want to talk about a topic that some may not like. But it is a burden and I have to talk about it. You are the message you preach. You are the message you preach. The quality of messengers has a long way to do with how people are going to receive the message. Balak knows this very well when he was sending people to Balaam. He sent the first set of people and when he did not get a good response, he sent another set of people who were more honorable than the first set of people. The same message but different categories of people. Why is it that a lot of people think that the messenger has nothing to do with the message? In my walk with God, I've come to discover that God is very, very much interested in the messenger as much as he is interested in the message. The way I know it is the Holy Spirit that impresses the Word of God into the hearts of sinners, into the hearts of people. It is God who convinced these people, He convicts them of their sins. But a lot of times we see situations of people who are supposed to welcome the gospel of Jesus Christ, making mockery of the gospel. Why? Because the messengers fail to live up to standard. The message of Christ has a standard. And those who must run with the message of salvation must live up to standard. I'm not a legalist person. I am not a perfectionist. I believe that we are all humans. But the Bible that we read, tells us that many of us should not be masters. As a matter of fact, James chapter 3 verse 1 says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. That means God is going to be stricter with us when he is going to judge us. You are the message you preach. We see a lot of preachings today, a lot of teachings today, but with little or no impact. Why? I have come to understand that many of the people that preach Christ don't live the life of Christ. There are so many unconverted preachers to the point that the very things that the Bible condemns are the things that they practice. And they go outside to tell people that repent and give your life to Christ. The standard of the Bible is different and the standard of their lifestyle is different. Yet they want to present the standard of the Bible. It doesn't work like that. He who must preach the word must be the word himself. He who must tell people to repent 
must be a repentant person and must be a converted soul. For someone to be unconverted and the person, the same person who is raw from the world because he learns a few things. If he goes into the world to convert sinners, he may not be effective. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Ye are our epistles. Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of a living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And in Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 17, we are told that we are the salt of the earth. We live in a world that is confused. People are confused. A lot of people don't know what to do. There are hundreds and thousands of religions in the world today. People don't know which one to follow and which one not to follow. Everybody is claiming right. People could just wake up and declare that they have founded a new religion and they get followers. As a matter of fact, I have been thinking because of the things I see around and I have been thinking and talking to myself that it doesn't matter how bad somebody is. If they come out to say the Lord has called me, they must get followers. We are living in a world that is confused. But the Bible says that we are the salt of this earth. There is bitterness out there. But we are to salt the lives of these people. We are to flavor this world. We are to preserve this world. Because that is what Christ wants us to do. We are the salt of this earth. The Bible goes on to say, Jesus Christ said, Ye are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel, under a bowl. Instead, put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We are the light. We are to give light to people in our ways. Preaching is not a difficult thing. But I was telling uh, a, a church staff, we worked together for about 10 years, and I was telling her on phone two days ago, okay, yesterday, I was telling her that if you are preaching, if you are on the pulpit and you are preaching, and you are saying, Stop fornicating, stop committing adultery, and your voice is so high, and then bring it down your eyes. You know, in our churches, many of our churches, the pulpit is always higher than the pews. So when you bring down your eyes and your eyes locked with a lady you have slept with before, I was telling her, how will you feel? We supposed to be the message we preach until we become the word, until we live the word, until we do the word and not just preachers of the word. We will never be effective in the kingdom of God. We have had situations of people preaching and people are becoming angry in the congregation. Why? Because they know that the person is just reciting the words of Christ and not, not actually teaching them. Because teaching, the one that is teaching has to be it first before you can teach it. 
How many of us today who are preaching Christ, who are Christians in church, have been converted? How many of us practice what we preach? Today it is more of do as I say, but don't do as I do. We have Paul in the Bible, and he has this to say in Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. That means, look at it. He said, those things that you have learned, which I have taught you, the one you learned from my character, the things you have received, the things you have heard, and the ones you have seen in me, the ones you have seen in me, he said, do. And this is the standard of Christians that Jesus Christ actually wants. People who can say, even though they are humans, people who can come up to say, what you have seen in me, practice. What am I trying to tell you? I'm not trying to say we are perfect. I'm not trying to say that uh, every one of us must be very perfect the way, the very day, the very moment we receive Christ. But what I am saying is this. We must put in conscious effort to live the life we preach, to live the life of the Bible, so that we don't become Confucianists. Uh, what we are saying is not loud because it is being overshadowed by what we are doing. What we are doing sounds so loud that people don't even hear what we are saying because action sounds louder than voice. How many of us can boldly say, whatsoever thing you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Paul says, Be imitators of me, even as I also imitate Christ. Be followers of me, as I am a follower of Christ. He was bold to make these statements, these very strong statements, because he lived an exemplary life. If we are doing one thing and we are telling people to do another thing, we will become more or less useless to the kingdom. We will confuse people. Let us put in conscious efforts to do what we are preaching. We have to do it first before we teach others. I was told a story of a doctor who a mother met with a young boy, a little boy who loved sugar so much. And then the mother took the child to the doctor and told the doctor, please doctor, talk to my son, you are a medical personnel. He loves sugar too much. He takes a number of cubes every day. It is bad for his head. I'm trying to explain to him, but he doesn't seem to understand. And then the doctor says, come back again. He gave them another appointment. He didn't talk to them. And then the mother went to, took the son to him and he said, I had to ask you to come back again because I said, when you came, I have been taking sugar. I knew it was bad, but I couldn't just stop it. But I have to take the challenge and stop it before I could talk to your little boy. Jesus Christ says, if there is a plank in your eyes, remove that plank first before you can see clearly to remove the dust in the eye of your neighbor. Let us 
put in conscious effort in making our lives the very image of Christ. Let us put in conscious effort by making sure we are transformed, by making sure we are converted. It is very, very difficult for someone who has become a preacher, for someone who has become a Christian and is holding positions in church to repent of some sins, especially when it has to do with telling people what you've been doing in secret, telling people your secret life so that they can help you to come out. It is very, very difficult because of pride, because People, you, you don't want people to see you as uh, someone who has grown so high and is still doing some things. You don't need to be ashamed. It is about your relationship with Christ. How many of us have really repented? How many of us are not confusing people? We have to stand up for the work of the kingdom. Jesus Christ called the disciples and they were with him for three years. And he taught them. It came to a point that people called them Christians. Because, why? Because they were behaving like their masters. Until we start living our lives like the master. Until we start dressing like the master. Until we start talking like the master. Until we become the message we preach, we will continue to deceive people and confuse people. Remember when the people went to capture Jesus, the Savior, the miracle worker, the one that was so popular in his time that multitude could throng him and Thousands of people could gather just to hear him. It came to a point, the very night that he was betrayed, they wanted to arrest him, but they did not recognize him. Why? Because the disciples were looking just like him. Even though they had different faces, they were dressing like him. They were looking like him. They were talking like him. And there was a confusion in the midst of the people that wanted to arrest him. Judas had to go and betray him with a kiss. He said, the one I am going to kiss, that one hold him, arrest him. It would have been very, very possible for the disciples to be uh, easily recognized for Jesus to be easily recognized among the disciples if they hadn't changed their physical appearance if they hadn't changed their behavior if you have been in church for years now if you have been a man of God a woman of God a prophetess a prophet if you have been holding position in the church if you have been going for evangelism, yet you have not yet repented fully, please do so. The Bible says in the James chapter 3 verse 1 that I read that we who are teachers, who are leaders, who are masters, will be judged with greater condemnation. We have to continue to repent every day. Some people have confused baby Christians, those in the world, the masses. They have confused many more than, they have confused more people than those they have affected their lives positively. Please let us change. I remember a story a young man a, a man told that a young man two young men entered a church compound and then a woman matured woman raised her hand and her armpit unshaved hair in her armpit 
in a church compound, the woman at attends the church. And the two young men saw her armpit with the hair in her armpit and they started saying dirty things in the church compound. Somebody led them astray to say those things. They are not even things I should be saying to you here. A believer confusing unbelievers. These were boys from the street. Let us be very, very careful. It is about the kingdom of God. The church is not a building. It is not a, an association. It is not a corporation. It is a kingdom. It is the kingdom of Christ. Let us not confuse people. Let us do what is right. I am not saying it is easy, it is difficult, but Jesus Christ says that his yoke is not burdensome. That means he gives us the grace if we are ready to follow him. Thank you for listening to this message. You can visit our website, egolaiopuna.com and hosannadavid.com. Don't forget to share this message. Thank you and God bless you. In case you want to reach us, you can reach me on eagleeyeopuna at gmail.com or on hosannadavid at ymail.com. God bless you.